Today's lesson is on the work kinetic energy theorem. For odd periods, this is due on Monday, January 27th, and for even periods, this is due on Tuesday, January 28th. So the last thing that we discussed in class was mechanical energy, and we stated that there are two types of mechanical energy, kinetic energy and potential energy. Today we're going to focus on how to find kinetic energy, and then we're going to connect it back to this idea of work. So remember that we defined kinetic energy as the energy of motion for an object. Kinetic energy has the following equation, Ke equals one-half m times v squared. And this is where kinetic energy stands for Ke, m stands for mass, and v stands for velocity. So let's go ahead and do an example. Uh, let's say that a 6 kilogram bowling ball is moving at 2 meters per second. What is its kinetic energy? Uh, we can see here that eight kilo, sorry, 6 kilograms will be the mass and 2 meters per second will be the velocity. So we can plug in 1 half, the mass is 6 kilograms, and the velocity 2 meters per second, and don't forget that squared. Uh, so remember that from PEMDAS, right, we should start off with this exponent. So we can go and say 1 half times 6 and then 2 squared. Remember that when we do something squared, it means to multiply it by itself. So 2 times 2 is going to go ahead and equal 4. Uh, and then we can go ahead and say 1 half times 6 is 3 times this 4. And 3 times 4 is going to give us 12. Uh, so the number that we get is 12, and the units for kinetic energy is actually that capital J for joules. Hopefully this looks familiar because this is, this is the exact same units that we actually use for work. So speaking of which, now that we actually know how to ca calculate kinetic energy, we can figure out how kinetic energy is related back to work. Remember our definition of work is when force causes the displacement of an object, uh, and that the e equation that we have is work equals force times our displacement. Uh, we talked about positive work, which is when the actual force of acting on an object is also in the same direction as the object is moving. Uh, and we said that in this case, we're going to go ahead and the object will speed up. We also talked about negative work, which means that the force is actually working in the opposite direction of the displacement of the object, the way that it's already moving. And in this case, since the force is against, we're going to go ahead and slow down the object. So getting back to that point, work actually causes a change in speed. And if speed is being changed, then that also means that motion is being changed. And that in turn means that if motion is being changed, then the energy of motion is also being changed. And remember, energy of motion is just our kinetic energy. So ultimately, we're saying that Work is related to kinetic energy because when kinetic energy changes, we have work. So to simplify that into the equation, work equals the change in kinetic energy. Uh, and remember that to find the change in something, we just do the final something minus the initial something. So in this case, work equals the kinetic energy final of an object minus the kinetic energy initial of an object. Uh, but remember that we actually know the equation for what kinetic energy is. We can plug that in. So the final relationship is that work equals one half m v final, the final speed squared, minus one half m v initial squared. And this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the work kinetic energy theorem. So the equation that we will be looking at today. So let's look at an example where an object is speeding up first. Uh, if a force is causing a 2 kilogram pineapple to speed up from 1 meter per second to 3 meters per second, what is the work being done on the pineapple? So we know that uh, 2 kilograms is our mass, we know that 1 meters per second is our initial velocity, and that 3 meters per second is our final velocity. So we're going to try and go ahead and plug this in and figure out work. So we have equals 1 half the mass we plug in 2, v final we plug in 3, don't forget that squared, minus 1 half, plug in our m again, so 2, and for our initial velocity we're going to plug in 1 meter per second squared. Remember from PEMDAS we start with the exponents first, so I'm going to have 1 half times 2, 
This 3 squared is just 3 times 3, so this is a 9, uh, minus the 1 half times 2, and this 1 squared, 1 times 1, will give me 1. So from here, uh, now I can go ahead and do my multiplication. So a half times 2, right here, will give me 1 times 9, minus a half times 2 here will also give me 1 times 1. Um, so we can continue multiplying. 1 times 9 will equal 9. 1 times 1 will give me 1. And finally, we can go ahead and subtract. So 9 minus 1 equals 8. Remember, our units for work is going to be joules. Notice that this is actually positive work, which makes sense because the bowling ball sped up from this 1 meter per second to 3 meters per second. Now let's look at an example where an object actually slows down. If the force of brakes is causing a 1,000 kilogram car to slow down from 20 meters per second to 10 meters per second, what is the work done on the car? So we know that the mass of the car is 1,000 kilograms, its initial velocity is 20 meters per second, and its final velocity is uh, 10 meters per second. So we can go ahead and plug stuff in. So a half times the mass is 1,000, the final velocity, so times final velocity, which is 10 meters per second squared, minus a half, again the mass is, sorry that's a half, again the mass is 1,000, uh, times the initial velocity, which was 20 meters per second squared. Start with the exponents, so this will give us a half times 1,000, 10 squared is 10 times 10, which equals 100 minus a half times a thousand and 20 squared is 20 times 20 which equals 400. So now we can go ahead and multiply stuff out. Uh, a half times a thousand equals 500 times this 100 uh, minus this half times a thousand again equals 500 minus four, or sorry, times 400. Uh, finish multiplying everything out, so 500 times 100 should give me 50,000 minus 500 times 400 should give me 200,000. And you can go ahead and check that in your calculator if you need to. So ultimately we can subtract 50,000 minus 200,000 will give me negative 150,000. So the work done is negative 150,000 joules, remember that's our units, um, and it should make sh sense that this answer is negative uh, because we know that the object is slowing down from this 20 meters per second to 10 meters per second. Well that's it for today. Make sure that you take good notes and that you are ready for Monday or Tuesday. See you later.